Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Regina and I am so glad that you are here. <laughs> I have been so MIA. There's been a series of events going on in my life. And so I just gave myself grace and did not post on YouTube and I missed it. Um, we went to Mexico and for vacation. And then when we got back, we cleaned up. We had stuff going on in the house. So we worked through that. And, um, I have just been having intense, um, just things be so intense for me in this season, like just the spiritual warfare. And I know it's because I gave God my yes in ministry and extending ministry. Um, I, the Lord has allowed me or he gave me an ebook to write on the book of Galatians, and I am obsessed with the book. Um, it, the Lord had me write some really great questions in that book and make some great observations about what the book of Galatians says. So I'm going to add the link to that down below. I hope that you give it a read and a like and share it with your friends and family. It is uh, $5 and so you can get it as a group, um, like purchase it individually for your small group and y'all can go through the book of Galatians as a group and use the study guide to go with it as well. So I pray that that's what God uses this ebook uh, Bible study for. Um, another thing that has been going on is <sighs> so much. So, um, so Mexico, we got back home, stuff going on. Yeah, we had gotten sick at one point and that was challenging. And then I got, like, my little one got sick. I got sick. But God just completely, of course, healed us and got us through that. And then um, this week, I am working with my church for the summer camp. And it's just been so fun and overwhelming all at the same time. Um, it's been three years since I've worked with kids. And I have forgotten that it is extremely taxing in every single way. Um, but I do like working with kids. I do. I love kids. Um, and what else? My son is getting so tall. Um, i trying to think. I did want to have some time just to share that um, if any of you are going to go into ministry, I think it's just so important that leaders that are, it's so important that leaders express to um, those that are thinking about going into ministry that the spiritual warfare can be intense and um like i've heard it before but once you actually get to experience it at hand it's a completely different story and so um i think that well i know that god has called me to ministry and to doing it effectively to do it non-lukewarm the Galatians Bible study that I wrote is titled Leaving Lukewarm to Living in a New Creation. And um, that is a lot of what 2023 is about for me, is really and truly leaving lukewarm to living in a new creation. Um, everything that the enemy has stolen from me, I am going to get it and I'm going to get it for the generations to come. And so there's just literally going to be, you know, 
it's a winning season. Okay? Like, it's victory. Um, the Lord is screaming victory. He's shouting victory. And that's just what it is. And so, I have been um, just thinking a lot and processing a lot with the Lord and uh, making sure that I'm in alignment with him. Um, once I got baptized with the Holy Spirit, I have a new re responsibility because I didn't have this responsibility before, which was to always keep in step with the Spirit, which is what the book of Galatians says. Um, if you walk by the Spirit, keep in step with the Spirit. I don't remember if that's Ephesians or Galatians. Um, let me look it up for reference. Okay, it's going to take some time to look that up and I may forget. So please forgive me if I do. But um, I do know that one of the scriptures says that if we walk by the Spirit, let's keep in step with the Spirit. And so I love that. I love that so much. Um, I'm learning a lot about myself as well in this in this season. Like at the beginning of the year, it was learning about God, learning about who he is, how he works, how he loves and accepting his love in a new way. I think that when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I really actually got a chance to... Um, accept God's love for me. Okay, so it's Galatians 5.25. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk also, let us also walk in the Spirit. So yeah, it is Galatians. That's the KJV version. Um, I'm usually an NIV reader. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So yeah, I was right. Galatians 5.25. Um... I am learning right now how to keep in step with the spirit because it's just so important. It's a, it's like a strong um, feature to have discerning of spirits, just to be all on you and in you, but also to allow the Holy Spirit to use you um, and being open to his moving. Um, being aware of who you are and your abilities and your boundaries. Like I'm learning all of that and keeping in step with it and wanting to grow in those areas. Um, it's just been a powerful season. Like I'm grateful. I'm really happy. Um, I'm really, really happy. And I have never been this happy in my entire life before. Um, God, like, God is just really, really good. And I do not, I believe God. Like, I used to not believe God's word for me and what he wanted for me. And the what I, I used to just really not believe the Bible. I've heard someone call it, are you an unbelieving believer? And I'm like, I used to be that way. That's also a part of leaving lukewarm. Like if God says something in his word, then it is so. It is so. I believe it is so. And Lord help my unbelief. Um yeah, I also will add along to this video some other things that God was downloading to me as well. Um, I just miss you guys. I wanted to step in here in the busyness of everything to just share about this, um, to just do like a life update. Um, so I will be seeing you guys soon. Okay, so I wanted to hop on here because um, this is a conversation that's so important. When... <coughs> Like, I used to not have boundaries, like boundaries over myself. I used to not have self-love, um, and I didn't understand how to keep peace in my life. And those three things 
led to me not being happy. That I, I strongly believe that those three things led me to not being happy. And you know, it comes from a stem of when you are young and you know yourself and you know what you don't want, you know what you want. And those um, desires are overlooked and um, you feel like people are, they don't listen to you and your desires. You tend to f completely lose who you are. You, you tend to like have a lack of self-awareness. And so that leads to a lot of turmoil that you just didn't even realize that you would have in your life, right? So all of this to say is that it's so important to know your boundaries, to know how to have the right people in your life. And not to believe that you have to hold on to every relationship that you ever have interacted with or encountered with. Because I believe that, like, that is a false narrative. Like, just because you met somebody doesn't mean that they're supposed to be in your life for the rest of your life. Um, I think that we have to do better at loving ourselves by saying I can't serve you in this capacity in this season and that's okay because that's going to allow you to have the peace that you were always meant to have and it's also important to know red flags in your relationships uh, red flags of people who won't allow you to have peace people who will try to disturb your peace um, and if they do like, you know, come and try to steal your peace, you'll just be able to bring them back on down to earth and just be like, Hey bro, I ain't gonna be able to do that. Or Hey sis, that's not something that I want to do. Um, I think that, I mean, I'm still young, but I would have liked to know, and I would have liked to love myself a lot better a long time ago versus you know just now understanding and discovering that because as you grow like as your family grows your capacity for others change and so you realize when you have a husband and you have children that you cannot give so much away anymore to people and when you do give parts of yourself away, which is healthy, right? Like we don't want to block everybody up out of our lives. We want to have the right people in our lives that are healthy, um, that are healthy for us in that season. So um, it's important for us to not uh, continue on with a bad cycle of not the best people in your life, right? Like... <coughs> I noticed that in my life that there was a pattern of my friendships looking the same as a important relationship in my life. And I think that I had to completely halt and figure out, okay, I'm seeing these patterns. These are not good patterns. What can I change? So I took the time and I changed it. And, um, it hurts, right? Like it hurts and the changes are challenging, but they must be made because you will continue to suffer if you do not grow. You will be comfy, like your comfort, it, comfort kills. It really does kill. Like the comfort that we need to be in is in the comfort of knowing who God is. That's the most comfortable we ever need to be. Um, I think that... <laughs> It's just so, so, so important to know the truth, right? To know the truth of what you want to allow in your relationships, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, who's going to steal your peace, why, why, like, what are they doing? Um, or if somebody is causing you to be uncomfortable, what kind of uncomfort are they causing? 
Are they asking you the hard questions that you actually need an answer? Or are they actually causing you pain in, in uncomfort, right? So we got to be able to slow down and identify <clears throat> what's taking place, what's taking root. What are we doing? How are we not listening to ourselves? Because we have desires, we have you know, plans and wishes and things like that and dreams. What is in the way of us reaching our dreams? Like, if there's a who in your way of reaching your dreams, why are you allowing that who to do that? And sometimes, you know, you'll have to pause a relationship in the relationship just so that you can come back or you may never come back to that relationship just so that you can get yourself together. It's not about them. It's just about you figuring you out. And we got to give each other grace, you know, whenever we know like, oh, she's just trying to figure things out or he's just trying to figure things out. We got to, we also have to be responsible of the way we communicate. Like communicate effectively without hurting people's feelings. I didn't understand how to do that. I didn't have like, I just didn't have a good understanding of how to do that for so long. And so it's like, <clears throat> the way that I would do things just wouldn't be the best. Yes, I needed to do certain things. Yes, I needed to, I don't know. But also to like, okay, so one of the things that I did want to talk about was money, right? Like, so last night, Sam and I had a great conversation. What? What are you saying? Oh, no, too. I have, we've been reading the Blessed Life book. And that book has just been a blessing. But um, as I've been reading, I've been seeing where I have, like, I feel like I've made a ton of mistakes about money. And a ton of mistakes about investments and um, wants and needs and how to look at money and how to just not allow money to um, run out of my hands. And I did, like, I felt like I've done a terrible job at that. Um, and so now, things are going to change. <clears throat> like, I will no longer ever view money the way that I used to view money. I'm trying to hold a sneeze. One of the things that I knew... I feel like early on in my walk with God was that I needed to tithe. And I would tithe here and there, but I didn't know that tithing was extremely spiritual. And now saying it out loud for where I am now in my walk sounds so funny. But at the beginning of my walk with God, I knew that he was supposed to have 10% of my earnings, and that was it. And so that was all that I would give the Lord, and I would just move on about my life, spend my money selfishly, <coughs> and with a poverty-stricken spirit, and my money would never, I feel like it did not have a kingdom impact in my life to where I could take care of God's people, take better care of myself, and things like that. So, um, so I, I came to know the Lord in college, and that was kind of where I got my idea 
of tithing at church and college. Um, I came to know the Lord from a ministry on campus. They were heavy on evangelism. <laughs> and so um, that was how I formed my relationship with God and grew it and stayed within that community all of my college years. And so I would work on campus and I remember giving God 10%, but I didn't have any other like knowledge of what to do with my money. So <clears throat> fast forward to now, reading that book um, that Pastor Robert Morris wrote, The Blessed Life, he's literally talking about praying over your money. And I'm literally like scratching my head and I'm like, I never prayed over my money. So like when I would give my tithe, I wouldn't necessarily even pray over the tithe, nor would I pray over the, the other 90% of my income. And so it just shocks me that I didn't do that and that I didn't know to do that, that, you know, I just kind of like swept it up under the rug. And so like in the blessed life, the pastor is talking so much about how God literally wants to bless us abundantly. His word says that he does, right? Like, <clears throat> I'll find some scriptures here that, um, that says that God wants to bless us abundantly and I'll post it in this video. But God's not going to bless us if we are not stewarding what we have well. Like, I got to tell y'all because if you are, um, if you're like me and you don't think or know to pay or pray over your finances, that is so detrimental to how your money will be spent. Like how to intentionally pray over your money. Like here are some prayers that I strongly believe God wants us to be praying over our finances. Father God, thank you so much for my earnings. Thank you, Lord, that you have given me the ability, the strength, and the wisdom to be able to have these finances and to steward them, Lord. Father God, I give you my tithe, I pray to, uh, to you over this tithe, Lord, that it would just be used to grow the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that um, those that will be impacted by this seed of tithing would just be blessed, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, I want to offer you another 5% of my income. God, use it for your glory, God. Bless my pastor, bless the pastor's wife, bless the church building, bless this homeless person, God, and I pray that you would grow them in you in Jesus' name. Lord, this money is yours, it's yours. And so I offer it back to you. Lord, with the rest of my, for example, um, 85%, of income, Lord, bless me to steward this very well. Bless me not to waste this money, God. Show me what to spend my money on. Bless me not to frivolously spend my money in places that I should not be spending my money. Um, bless me to go in the go to the places that you want me to go to. Um, Lord, help me to be wise. God, this is your money, it's not my money. And Lord, I pray that 
whoever needs any extra money that you would open up my eyes to give. Or whoever needs a bill paid that you would open up my eyes to give. Whoever needs some, you know, money or whatever it may be, open up my eyes to give, Lord, abundantly. Huh? Are you on the phone? In Jesus' name, amen. That's just an example. So, you scared me. You came out of nowhere. Why is your shirt wet? What do you do? My cup? Your cup? Um, and that's just an example. So you can have your self. You can pray in the spirit and just allow God to take over your finances and be who he is. Um... So I just wanted to share that super quick thing and I hope it encourages you. Peace.